Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's my pleasure to bring you the next video in our series of Things You Missed in Elden Ring, and today we're covering the Lake of Rot. This is a huge area, consisting of two smaller areas, and just quickly to recap, you need to get here through Noxtella, so make sure that you've gone and watched that one if you haven't already. Before we even step foot in this area, as the name suggests, everything is covered in rot. It is literally just a giant lake made out of scarlet rot. So I'm going to be wearing the mushroom set because it has the highest immunity in the game. Then I'm also going to be putting on certain talismans that boost my immunity even further, such as the mottled necklace and the immunizing horn charm. That brings my immunity up to a whopping 580. Now we can go ahead and grab the map for the Lake of Rot right right right, 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 Now we can go ahead and grab the map for the Lake of Rot right here. And before we do anything else, we'll sprint forwards slightly to the southwest onto this platform. And right where I'm stood, there's a button that you can stand on to raise a few more platforms from the depths of the lake to make it easier to traverse this area. I've just quickly teleported back to the site of Grace because I thought of another amazing suggestion to help you traverse this lake even easier. You'll want to equip any seal that you have the stats to be able to wield effectively. I'm just going to use the Frenzied Flame Seal because this has zero stat requirements. And then I'm going to equip the Two Fingers Heirloom to bump my faith just above the stat requirement so that I can use Flame Cleanse Me which will do a tiny amount of damage to you. However, will completely remove Scarlet Rot, as you see just here. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic when traversing some of the further reaching areas in this zone. For some reason, I decided to go and grab this rock grease before raising the platform. But there we go. Now the platform's raised and we can start progressing through the lake in the next tip. Now we're really getting into the meat of it. So, first things first, as you're exploring this initial platform that we've raised up, there will be a couple of basilisks that spawn, so be careful and take them out if you want to. And then, once you've dealt with them, run over here to trigger another switch and raise up a load more platforms. Before we head over that way though, we're going to double back on ourselves and head to the top left of the lake in the northwest to grab these couple of items way out of the way. So I'm going to need to use a lot of the Flame Cleanse Me incantation here to get me to these 10 black key bolts and then right at the other end to get a Summer Smithing Stone 7. Now that we've got them, we'll head all the way back and as I get back to that initial platform, I'm ambushed by another Basilisk that I'll take out. And now I'm going to spend quite a lot of time trying to aggro this ancestor that's a mile away. And he's the only ancestor in this entire area. I don't know how he got here. I don't know what his story is. I don't know why he wanted to get here. I don't know why he's immune to Scarlet Rot. I'd love to know this guy's story, actually. But anyway, as I unsuccessfully try to aggro him towards us, I'll just hop off the platform here, grab this warming stone, and then start beelining it towards him so we can take him out. Being that this fight is in the Scarlet Rot, this is quite terrifying. Well, that's a very clever bit of lore, isn't it? That would explain why he was immune to the Scarlet Rot, because he was wearing the Immunizing Horn Charm plus one. Obviously, it doesn't make us completely immune, but it will even further reduce the buildup. So we'll swap out to that once we're back on dry land again. Now we'll keep heading all the way to the east, to this bit of broken structure jutting out of the lake here. I'm going to get safely on the stones so that I stop taking Scarlet Rot damage. And then we'll take out the Basilisks and loot the Golden Rune 9. And this is when I can now switch out to the Immunizing Horn Charm plus one. I also just very quickly check to see if you can use the plus zero version and the plus one version side by side, but you can't, it's one or the other, so we'll swap out one for the other. Now we're going to head directly north and explore the top right corner of the lake, then we will have completely explored the whole of the top section of the lake. So round the back of these ruins is a couple of basilisks and a somber smithing stone seven. Once you've looted that and they're all dealt with, you can run all the way up into the top right hand corner and right over in the furthest corner at the back here is a somber smithing stone eight. And then finally, as we're running back towards the initial site of grace, you can get an Aeonian butterfly from here and another one on the corpse just around this tree. So now I'll start making my way back to the site of grace so we can rest up and replenish all our healing items before we then move into the next part. I meet you now back on the platform where I tried to snipe the ancestor from, just where we picked up the warming stone. And we're gonna head straight to the south Across these few platforms, you can either deal with the basilisks here or dart past them and deal with them when you get to the larger platform just to the south of you. And now we're going to be exploring the southeastern part of the Lake of Rot. I've placed a few markers down for myself just so I can make sure we cover the whole lake and don't miss anything. As we get onto this platform, 
take your time clearing out the basilisks that spawned as you ran past. Once they're dead, I'm going to hop over here and trigger this stone button just so that we can see exactly what platforms we're working with for the next area. But now, before we head anywhere else, head back to the platform we were just on and off to the southeast is what looks like a big ass boss. And spoiler alert, it is. So I'm going to try and fail to aggro him because the range on my bow clearly isn't quite enough. So I'm going to run over to this platform here and aggro him with a direct hit from Loretta's Great Bro. I just said Great Bro again! Fuck. Fuck it. Every Great Bow in the name... In the, in the name? Every Great Bow in the game is now a Great Bro. Leg it back to the platform we were just on. And if you have any ranged capabilities at all, try and destroy his ass before he gets anywhere near you. Because this is a very tough fight when you're fighting on such tiny platforms covered in a lake of rot. And when he's dead, you will get the Dragon Scale Blade, which I'm going to demo for you here in just a second, because this is the sickest katana in the game. It may not be the most powerful. As we all know, the Moon Veil tops so many lists of top weapons. But in regards to how aesthetically pleasing its Ash of War is, oh, it's so good. So this sword can't be infused with other Ashes of War, and it can't be enchanted with magic or consumables. However, when you use the Ice Lightning Sword skill, not only will it slam down with a bolt of Ice Lightning, the Ice Lightning effect will persist on the sword for a while, giving it Lightning Elemental damage along with passive Frostbite. I mean, just look how awesome this is. Very cool as far as katanas go. Now we've taken out that boss, raised all the platforms, and swooned over the sword, it's time to move into the southeast of the lake, and then we'll progress over to the southwest in just a few minutes. There really isn't much voiceover I can provide you with this section of the lake, bar just calling out what items are around here. So I feel like we need some really cheesy, copyright-free version of the Benny Hill theme, or something similar if that doesn't exist, while my character just whizzes around at a thousand percent speed. <laughs> And I, and I just call out for you the few items around here, because you're very familiar with the lake by now, and the only enemies you're going to encounter is the occasional basilisk. So, as I've been jabbering on during the first part of this video, that's given me time to get to the stone button here, so you can at least see all the platforms raise up. Now, we're just going to run around like a headless chicken, grabbing all the items. So, now that the platforms are here, back where I just came from, you've got a golden rune 7 and a golden rune 10. Then a little bit further to the southeast is some lightning proof dried liver. As we're just running around grabbing all these items, I just thought I'd very quickly jump in here and say if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to go that one step further, becoming a member or even just using the super thanks feature honestly it helps me out so damn much. And I cannot begin to express how thankful and grateful I am for everyone that decides to support the channel in this way. Also, for anyone who has already, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, I'll shut up and continue with the guide. Next, we're going to head all the way to the southeastern corner, take out these basilisks. Fumble a few times and then eventually get up this ruined structure and grab a somber smithing stone 8. Next thing we do, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go, next thing we're going to do is go all the way to the southern wall, climb up this structure, jump on top of the mountain, Hop along this broken wall, and now that you're on top of this structure, you can jump down and grab the Mushroom Crown. We'll pause here for a second, because the Mushroom Crown is amazing. It's a really heavy, really beefy version of the Mushroom Head. And something I don't show you until a little bit later on, is that the Mushroom Crown will temporarily increase your attack power whenever anything in the whenever whenever the whenever anything in the vicinity receives poison, scarlet rot, or bleed. It might just be poison or scarlet rot. I'll show you in just a minute because I am going to review it very very shortly. Anyway, now that you've grabbed that, there's a few Aeonian butterflies scattered around here. And then, just so you don't waste your time, right over in the southwestern corner is just a whole swarm of Aeonian butterflies. 
so if you're not planning on crafting with them much, you don't need to waste your time. Also, there's a Somber Smithing Stone 6, but we're at the point in the game now where we need 7s, 8s and 9s. So it's the least missable of the Smithing Stones in the area if you don't want to have to deal with this part of the swamp, or the lake should I say. Now we'll head back to where we were before we defeated the boss, and we'll prepare to move over into the southwestern corner and down into the second area of this zone. From here, just head directly west, using the bottom of the columns of this giant structure that we raised up earlier to protect yourself from the Scarlet Rot. Now that we're at the other side, I'll double check, and here you go, yes, raises attack power when something nearby suffers poison or rot, and that can be you or enemies. So, nifty little quirk to this armor set. Now we're going to head into the southwest corner. There's nothing of note for a few seconds here. Now that we're here and we've grabbed the preserving bolluses, just at the edge of this waterfall, or this rotterfall, should I say, is the entrance to the second part of this zone. We're going to finish wrapping up in the actual lake itself, and then we'll head down there. So come back slightly towards the northeast, and you've got the final stone button that you can trigger for this area, and it will raise you up into the heavens. And directly north of you, further along this bridge, another one of them alabaster lords will start spawning in. And when you defeat him, you'll get the alabaster lord's sword. The best thing about this weapon, if you do like your gravity magic in the game, is the unique skill for this, the alabaster lord's pull, is essentially just a stronger, bigger version of the spell Gravitas that we got near the start of the game. That's about the only reason to use this sword. It's not the best, but it's unique and it's cool. Now, further along from where we killed him, you can get yourself a Somber Smithing Stone 9. Now, that is one worth getting, unlike the Poxy 6 that we found earlier. Pugh. We're done on this platform, so we're going to go back the way we came and jump down this ladder, and then we can head back towards the waterfall again. There's one more item to grab before we go down, and it's just over to the northwest here, in this structure, in the chest, you'll find the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 22. And this will allow you to craft rock pots and rock grease, so you can start to apply lots of rock buildup to all of your enemies. And you'll see there's a series of cliffs just to the bottom left of me here on the map. I even marked it with Beacon 4, because at the time, it totally looked like a cool area you could get to. No, can't get to it. There's no hidden items. Don't worry, you're not missing anything. There is nothing there. So now we're completely done with the lake itself. I'm going to do a little mid-episode wave, because that's where I was going to end the video. And now we can start progressing down into the Grand Cloister. Head over to the left, and you can run down this set of stairs and grab the Sight of Grace. And now I'm just going to spend a minute equipping my original armor set and talismans to make me strong and beefy, because we're pretty much done with the rot. So now you can head down the stairs west from the Sight of Grace and start very carefully hopping on the broken ledges around this structure. At the end, on the top one here, you can get yourself a Golden Rune 10. Then you want to jump through the hole, get a Golden Centipede, and then very carefully keep dropping down the structure where I am here. There's a bunch of kindreds of rot in this area, so be super cautious taking them out because they are bastards. And then before we progress further west into the area, we're just going to do a 180 and run back this way. There's another kindred to take out, and then you'll see two items at the end of this little river here. It's at this point I realise how insanely ridiculous my character looks, and I sacrifice a little bit of my defence because Fashion Souls always wins. And then the second I do that, and I go and grab the Smithing Stone 6 and the Smithing Stone 7, an ulcerated tree spirit that I had no idea that existed bursted out from underneath me. I get poisoned with Scarlet Rot, I aggro another Kindred of Rot, and now there's an ulcerated tree spirit chasing me down. Actually, in this area, this would be a putrid tree spirit, wouldn't it? Because he inflicts Scarlet Rot buildup. Even better! And now it's time for one of the most butt-clenching fights I've had in this entire game. I nearly die and hang on by the skin of my teeth time and time and time again and finish the boss fight with a total of zero healing potions and zero FP potions. But once we do finally take him down, we're rewarded with 10k runes and more importantly, a golden seed. You can now finish looting the other items around here. There's nothing of importance though. A golden rune, an Aeonian butterfly and a nascent butterfly. Honestly, nothing special to call out. So we'll start heading down towards the west and you'll see no less than, what, half a dozen kindreds of rot here, maybe more? So do your best to aggro them one at a time and slowly start working your way through and taking them all out. Then you can grab the few items that were around them. Most importantly, the Ghost Glove Wart 9. Make sure you don't miss that. 
There's nothing either side of the stairs, so you can head straight up into this room, and don't worry, there's no ambush waiting for you either. What there is, in the chest, is the Scorpion Stinger, which is one of a very, very, very few weapons in the game that inherently causes Scarlet Rot buildup. So we now have a lot of ways to inflict Scarlet Rot, which is a very good feeling, considering we've been having to suffer with it throughout the whole game. Now, jump in the coffin, because you will clearly survive a plummet down this waterfall in a massive stone death trap. Of course, we emerge completely unscathed, because why wouldn't we? And now, I shall talk you through what is about to come up in the next and final part of this video. I'm gonna let practically the entirety of this boss fight play out, because Astal, Natural Born of the Void, honestly was my favourite boss during my first playthrough. Who was yours out of curiosity? And the reason Astal was my favourite... No, actually, before I get into that, so, <laughs> really quickly, there is no Sight of Grace here. So you will have to come into this boss fight with whatever healing and other items you had left over from the Grand Cloister. For me, that was one healing potion, and bugger all else. So I'm fairly confident I'm going to get absolutely trounced during this first attempt, but luckily there's a stake of Marika here, so I can respawn and go in fully prepared for the fight. Also, it's been a while since I fought Astal, so I'm not fully familiar with his timings anymore, but we'll see what happens. Now, as I was saying, I absolutely adore this boss because of how hard it can be. Genuinely, Astal gave me the most trouble in the game out of any boss, and I reveled every single moment of it. I must have spent a few hours on this guy, and probably two dozen attempts, and I felt that every single death I learnt something, and I went in better prepared, and it was just a really clear time lapse of me getting progressively better at this boss, and every single time I went in, just a tiny little bit more prepared, and I thought, right, I've got you this time, and it was just the greatest experience one of my highlights of all the Dark Souls games I've played, which is all of them. Obviously, during my first playthrough, my build was nowhere near as streamlined as it is here, so I had a much harder time with him. As you can see, the boss fight is going quite a lot better for me here than it was during my first playthrough. And in all honesty, holy crap! I cannot believe I just beat him with practically no FP, half a health bar, and one healing item. If that ain't worth subbing to the channel, I don't know what is. Oh, did you like that cheeky plug? That was disgusting. <laughs> Once you've taken out Astol and rested at the side of Grace here, right at the end of the room, you'll see there's a seal that you cannot access unless you've been progressing Rani's questline. Usually, I'd end it here and do all of this off camera, but really quickly, I thought I'd show you what you can get from the Remembrance of the Natural Born. A very cool flail with dex and int scaling, which comes along with magic damage and the nebula skill. Hell yeah, incredible weapon. But I'm actually gonna opt to go for the Ash of War, Waves of Darkness. This is like the darkness version of the Ash of War Holy Land, and it sounds super badass. So I'm now gonna spend a few minutes looking through to see which weapon I would like to level up and apply it to. I opt to go for the Great Stars, and then once I upgrade this to plus 20, which is the most I can get so far, look at this, it now has 119 frost buildup and 50 blood loss buildup. Along with the Waves of Darkness Ash of War, this is going to be an absolute machine. So I'm going to pick a random ass Sight of Grace and just go beat up all the dancing ladies in the Windmill Village. And while I'm here, look at all this stuff I missed the first time I was here. There's a Rune Arc, some Stormhawk Feathers, Lightning Grease... I can't believe how unthorough I was during this area. I am ashamed of myself. But anyway, had a blast demoing this weapon out. I think this is what I'll probably use for the next few parts of this guide. As always, I hope you had an absolutely amazing time. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to go that one step further, consider becoming a member or consider using the super thanks. Helps out tremendously and I genuinely hugely appreciate every single person that does. Thank you so, so much as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.